Hey everyone, welcome back to GLSL 101 for Touch Designer Developers. Last lesson, we looked at the conceptual foundations for parallel programming and understanding some intuition for why GPU programming is so important and powerful. Thank you for coming back. And if you are just joining now, go take a look at that if you are interested. Uh, this lesson, we're going to focus on actually getting into Touch Designer. Uh, but first, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a new media artist based in Brooklyn. Um, I create interactive installations and generative architectural facades all over the world uh, using techniques that I am going through right now. So here's a couple images uh, showing work that I've completed in the past. I think almost all of this was from the past year. And again, heavily using GLSL computing in Touch Designer. So here is some motivation for maybe why all the stuff that I'm talking about is worth listening to. Okay, so like I said, our current lesson, lesson one, is writing your first shader in Touch Designer. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today, finally getting into some of the good stuff. Now, before we begin, it's important to do a couple things. One, make sure you have Touch Designer, uh, the newest version, downloaded and installed. Download these lesson files uh, from my Patreon, if you would like. Download a text editor for scripting if you don't already have one that you use. I like using VS Code, uh, and then make sure that you have the GLSL lint extension, which will give you some syntax highlighting for GLSL. And then finally, uh, we want to go and set our default text editor in Touch Designer. And so I can actually show you how to do that right now. So in Touch Designer, if I go to Edit, Preferences, uh, then this dialog comes up. I go to the Dats menu. And uh, here, this text editor path. This should be pointed to wherever the download uh, exe is from the text editor that you downloaded and want to use. Uh, so a little bit of terminology before we get into things. And I'm sorry, but it does need to happen because I want to make sure that everybody is speaking the same language and you're going to see these words all over the place. So it's very important to have a little bit of an understanding of what they are. Um, I'll talk through these quickly since all the text is, is listed out here. Um, an array, an array is, I'm, I'm sure everybody knows from other programming, uh, just a collection of data elements. For our purposes, that array is going to be the data that we're passing into the GPU, whether that is a two-dimensional texture array, a one-dimensional array of, let's say, vertices, or um, a three-dimensional array, which could be something like a tensor, um, as an example. A shader is the program that is executed on the GPU. That's what we're going to be writing. Uh, thread is a stream of data and instructions that's assigned to a GPU core. So this is actually a very important concept. The, th the whole reason that parallel computing is fast, optimized, fun is because it makes use of these threads to chunk up all of our computation and do those threads in parallel. So there's all of our data. We take a piece of data out of that and a set of instructions, which are a shader, and we pass those two things together to a GPU core, which passes the shader over the data elements in the thread and computes, well, whatever the instructions say to compute. A sampler buffer is a one-dimensional array that's going to be generally things like uh, floats or vec4s. We can pass those into our GPU to access that information in our computation. A texture, a texture is an image, uh, a top, if you will. Um, it's a two dimensional array of data elements, but you can really think of it as just like an image or a top where each element is a pixel and each pixel has four RGBA values. Uh, these are often stored in the GPU memory for faster access, which is what happens in Touch Designer. A uniform is a uniform uh, because it is a value that's passed to our shader. And then uh, for every element that that shader runs over, that uniform value is the same. 
And that's a really, really powerful thing. And we'll talk about how to use those in more interesting ways shortly. But uniforms are great because they can also be dynamically updated every frame. Uh, so you can kind of think of uniforms as similar to a parameter on a top, maybe, uh, because that's actually how a lot of those are implemented. A text cell is just a single unit in a texture. So if a pixel is a unit in an image, a text cell is a unit in an abstract texture that might not hold image data. Um, a function is a reusable block of code. And a variable is a allocated bit of memory that has a value and a reference to the memory location that we can then use throughout our code. Uh, that's also very important. All right, so now that we have some idea uh, about this terminology, we can talk about the relevant aspects of a shader program, and then I promise we will get into it. So we have the dimension. The dimension is going to be the size of the output array. So if the shader is producing an image, that would be the resolution of the image. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, it could be uh, the length of a one-dimensional array um, or the three-dimensional dimensions of a tensor. The input array is that data that will be processed. Uh, again, the image or the vertices, etc. Uniforms, these are going to be floats, vectors, matrices, or arrays of these uh, types that are passed into the shader from the CPU. The great thing about that is it means that we can pass different values from the CPU to the shader uh, for different frames to animate things. So you can think about that kind of like parameters on the top. Uh, then we have our shader, uh, which includes variables and functions, which we already talked about. And then finally, the output buffer, which is the texture or array that is written to by the shader and then saved in memory for use. So how do we actually write a shader in Touch Designer? Let's start with this. So I'm going to make my slides a little bit lower, smaller, and we'll jump in here. And I'll just kind of talk through this and show you as I go. So the first step is a GLSL or GLSL multi top. The only difference is how many inputs they have. So I normally use the multi as a default. We open up the parameters. We have the common tab, which includes uh, resolution. This is going to be the output dimension. Um, and of course, in other touch designer tops, we have this use input, which is also available but um, you can set the resolution manually. And then finally, our shader, which is here, and we can edit this. And in Touch Designer, all shaders are text stats. So we have a text stat on the common tab. We can set this to GLSL language, and then uh, that will allow us to edit. Uh, as well as open and edit in an external shader uh, editing program or text editor like VS Code, which I talked about. Um, and so that is the very basics. So let's set up some uniforms and actually think about what these mean. So in Touch Designer, uniforms can be uh, a couple different types. Vectors are the most common. And these are uh, just floats or vec4s, uh, vec234. There are also arrays, which are generally chops. Um, these chops can also have the same uh, type. So like a float is a one-channel chop with multiple samples. Uh, vec2 is a two-channel chop with multiple samples, etc. Matrices, uh, which are normally defined uh, by pointing at some piece of geometry and a pre-calculated matrix uh, here. And those are really the main types of uniforms. So let's make a shader uh, vector uniform called U time. This is going to be a float. We'll write abs time dot seconds in this uh, value X. And then in our shader, uh, we can incorporate this by writing uniform float u time and make sure that this word, this name is identical to this name. And now we can use our uh, uniform in our shader. 
Although right now it's not really doing anything because, uh, well, for a number of reasons. But we can see this work if I just wrap this in a fract, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but now we have this nicely animating shader using a uniform, uh, which is exactly what we're talking about. So the next thing is the output definition in a shader. So that is going to be here. This uh, output definition. And right here we have it as frag color. Uh, this is the default out vec for frag color. You can change this so I can make this my color out. And then if I were to copy and paste this here, so I'm referencing my color out instead of frag color now, um, this is this is all working. One thing I will just note here, this TD output swizzle is a function that touch designer wants us to use when we're outputting to a buffer. It does work without that. Um, but it will kind of reduce a lot of weird edge cases if we keep this in and pass it through the, the touch designer output swizzle function. So you're going to see that a lot and you'll stop thinking about it eventually. So that's pretty much all we're doing with output definitions right now. Uh, later, much, much later, uh, we'll talk more about this and how to set up multiple outputs with different names and things like that. But for now, uh, that is good enough. And so now we are left with the main function where all of the good stuff happens. So I'll get rid of this commented out code for now. And we can just look at what's going on. So we have a variable called color that is declared with a type a vec4 called color. And we're setting this equal to another vec4. Um, and this is wrapping u time, which itself is wrapped in a fract. So fract simply takes the uh, decimal or the float that's passed through it and returns only the decimal part. So if it's 101.1 .1 that's passed through, 0.1 is what the fract will return. Because this abs time.seconds is an ever increasing float, uh, we're basically just getting a value that loops from zero to one. And that's what we're seeing uh, represented as this shader fading from one to uh, zero or transparent to white rather. So this is all the main function. Now there can be a lot of other stuff here. For example, like color dot B, I don't know, plus equals U time over two. I don't know. And now we have a weird uh, other shade going on. Um, you can have arbitrary calculation here, really too much to go into right now. Uh, but this is just to give a high level understanding of the main function and what it's doing. The last thing you'll note is that the main function is type void, which means it doesn't return anything, and that all of our logic is wrapped in these braces. So with that, you have written your very first shader in Touch Designer. Uh, we talked about kind of all the different pieces, how the pieces work together, and this is going to be a great foundation for the next lesson where we're going to start adding a little bit more complexity and do a little bit more fun stuff, uh, looking at using more uniforms, some variables, and texture sampling. So I am excited for that. Hopefully you guys are too. If you're enjoying this so far, uh, like, subscribe on YouTube, and you can always catch all the project files, as well as these slides um, on my Patreon, along with a multitude of other tutorial content that I have created already. So with that, happy creating, and I will see you for the next lesson.